try some more. We, I did it two weeks ago. And then we had a little break because of uh, local U.S. holiday independence day, July 4th. So now we're back at it. And I think you guys can hear me okay. Please let me know. Hey Neil. I'm gonna unplug this and plug it back in. Is that any better? going on with this microphone.
Check test one, two. Probably loud popcorn now. Hey, Ian. I don't know how to fix this. Hello? Hey. Is that working? Let's crank up this. Hello? Check test one, two. Come on, microphone. You can do it. Is it working? Okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I, hooked, I hooked directly to my Mac instead of through a stupid hub. That's the problem. And... Audio is low now? Okay, let me crank it. How's that? Echo? There shouldn't be an echo. Is there an echo? Gosh dang it. Okay. All right. Good? So, can you guys see this? This is a, a microphone splitter. I have, um, I have a PC and a Mac set up, and I split my mic between the two. So that's, that's what's going on. Is the audio levels good? Sounds great? Okay, great. Anyway, I was going through a USB hub and I think that was the problem. I need to go directly into my Mac so there's no popcorn. Okay, thanks guys, thanks for your patience. All right, let's get this thing rocking. Stinking tech. <laughs> oh goodness, all right. So this is where we left off last week. Um, I really, I'm, I'm really enjoying creating this guy. I love the design. Josh did a fantastic uh, job on this. Oh really? <laughs> the rest of the problem? Yeah, I'm Ryan Kittleson. Well, you know, it, I could be worse. <laughs> no, Ryan's great. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's up with this preview mode. Okay. This is strange. All right. So um, what I wanted to do is continue to work on this guy, make his outfit, uh, give him some hair. I want to adjust his eye size. I feel like his eyes are a bit too large. So I was going to shrink them down and I want to make his ears bigger. So, um, 
Yeah, that's really strange. So no restream bot? Restream bot's not working? That's weird. Okay, well, it is what it is, I guess. Hey, what's going on, Matt? How you doing? And hello, everyone, that I didn't say hello to. Okay, so um, I don't show this very often, but um, I have this trick to shrink eyes down, like scale eyes or move them around or if they're not right where I want them to be. Um, hey, Toontown, how's it going? So uh, it's, it's a combination between uh, what Paul, uh, Paul Gabriel says, uh, no, uh, he calls, uh, calls it pizza boxes. <laughs> and it's underneath the, the gizmo here. You can see pizza boxes right here. So, um, and what that does, it allows you to move multiple subtools at once. And the other thing it does is it allows you to work with, um, work with masking. It respects masking. Hey, Jay, how you doing? So what you can do is you can go in here and you can't, this is Sculptress Pro. I think I'm going to take a moment and, and Z remesh this and subdivide it down. So let's do that first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have these, I have a really cool, fancy new arrow pointing thing. Check this out. So yeah, see this arrow? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Looks like, if it looks like it's from Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah, something like that, huh? Okay, so I, I duplicated this. Let's do a Z remesher. Um, okay, there we go. Um, let's try 3000 and I'm not going to keep groups and we'll see. Well, so this is what I'm Z remeshing right here. <laughs> and I don't think I need to keep groups, so I'm going to turn that off and let's just see what we get. So is audio still good? I hope so. I mean, I, I'm really loving this new setup, so I hope, I hope it's good. Okay. I think that'll work. So let's subdivide this. One, two, three... Audio's good, awesome. Okay, sweet, sweet. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so turn off solo. Hey, Mark. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Awesome. Okay, so what I did is I Z-remeshed this and then I subdivided it and now I'm going to project the details. Yes, project the poly paint. Hey, Leonard. Yeah, it is actually. It's working great. Um, I'm still trying to get that knob to work how I want it to work, but uh, I really, I really like the keyboard. You know, um, sometimes it's not as sensitive to, to push the buttons as I'm used to with the Apple keyboards. So um, if you guys can see it, what, what Leonard's talking about, I can put it in the camera down here. See it down here? I have this Logitech Craft keyboard and it's backlit, and it has this knob up here, and you can make that knob do different things, which is really cool. I don't have to have it plugged in. I leave it plugged in all the time so it can just sit and continuously charge, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now this is done uh, projecting. Let's take a look at it and see how it did. Yeah, it's pretty good, I think. Let's uh, subdivide it a couple more times. Yeah, I can't even get the the volume to work just because it's like a, it's a Mac thing, you know? It's weird. Okay, let's see. Control D, 1.71 million. Okay, great. So just so you know, this is the after and this is the before. So before it was Sculptress Pro and I was cutting in the uh, details with Sculptress Pro, you can see I was just adding the detail where I wanted it to be. And now I've subdivided, subdivide and conquer, right? 
Um, what do I want to do with the knob? Uh, just, honestly, just, I don't know. I don't know if I even want it. So I was, I was kind of, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I would have bought the, the newer, the newer one without the knob, but, um, just volume's fine. You know, I don't know. I think, I, I don't think I have a preference one way or the other. But, uh, okay, let's see. So now you can see this is a subdivided projected, um, you know, I've, I've subdivided, projected it, and now we're good to go. Hey, Kenya, how you doing? Good to see ya. And Kenya, did you get that link I sent you in Discord? Okay, let's see. Hey Jay, um, okay, while you're in gear, I used the Cintiq years ago, but I've never owned one. Always use the Intuos models. Recently picked up a cheap XP pen display tablet. Seems okay. Your thoughts on budget tabs? Um, so, here, let me hide my ruler. So, my thoughts on, on tablets and screen tablets or, or display tablets, um, like right, right here, this is my um, Cintiq 27 no touch Cintiq. So it doesn't have, uh, doesn't have touch. I think, I think touch is kind of a gimmick. So um, this is, and, and what I like about Cintiqs versus um, tablets. So I do have an Intuos Pro. I've used tablets for the majority of my career. I didn't switch to a Cintiq until... Um, I would say, geez, I would, I would guess like 2007 or eight or something like that. Um, and the only thing a Cintiq will give you or a, a screen tablet will give you is precision because it's a one-to-one. -one. I, I can, I can touch it and it's right here on my display. So it just allows it, allows me to only draw a curve one time instead of multiple times. That's really the, the only benefit it gives me. And I can see it right on screen and it's a, just a one-to-one -one connection. Whereas a tablet is kind of a, a, an off connection. So you're, you're looking at the tablet, you're using it down here, but you're looking at the screen up there and it works just fine. Um, and the sensitivity levels are exactly the same. So, um, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's good. So, my recommendation is get a tablet the best you can afford. And some people actually prefer tablets over Cintiqs because their hands don't get in the way. Um, and it takes up a lot less screen uh, desk space. So this weighs almost 50 pounds, this thing. It's huge. It even made my last desk bow in the middle. I had to get a new desk and get a thicker top because it was so dang heavy. And I tried to go back to using a tablet and I just, I'm kind of spoiled. So I just couldn't do it. Um, so I went back to using my Cintiq and, uh, but I've been sculpting on, on an iPad recently and I like that. I like, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The only thing is you just want to have something with pressure sensitivity. Don't be sculpting with a mouse. Okay. Because it's like, it's just, it's like a switch rather than sensitivity. So it's either on or it's off and it's just not a good, a good thing to do. Okay. Anyway, and as far as budget versus, you know, name brand like Wacom, I, I think, I think they work great. I actually have a, let's see. I actually have this, this tablet that got sent to me that I need to review. It's called a, uh, a Zenk, Zenz Labs pen tablet. Um, I, I'm really curious to see what this remote does and how these pencils feel. It came with two different pens, a skinny one and a thicker one. Um, and this is a good, I think this is a really good budget tablet that you can look into. So, um, yeah, I still need to do a, open that up and do a review on that. And I'll let you know how that goes. Okay. So now that we have this divided, I'm going to get rid of the original Sculptress Pro. So now we have a subdivided version. And the reason I wanted to do that is because it just handles, um, handles masking better. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about giving, doing a giveaway for the tablet. Yeah. So if you're, if you're interested in that, go, I, I can't promise anything. I'm just, I've just been thinking about it. I got to figure out how giveaways work and how to be all legal about it. So, um, if you're, but if you are interested, you can go check out, um, 3d character workshop over on YouTube and subscribe and, uh, then you'll be notified. And you can also download my brushes on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you can get on my emailing list and I'll, I'll do, uh, I'll let you know that way as well. And it's free. Hey, no worries, Jay. I like, I like talking about that stuff. Thanks for the question. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about masking for a second because, um, yeah, I guess I'm going into some, some teaching on this one. Thanks, Neil. I have not tried an XP pen, but I've heard good things about it. Okay, so uh, something about masking. Now, this, is a, this has now become a subdivided uh, object, okay? So it has its low resolution with some real subdivision levels. So what does that mean? Well, if I go down in subdivision levels, this is actually the, the real subdivision levels. This is the first the level, level one, I guess. And so when I go to mask on this, the masking happens on the dots. So uh, the dots that connect the edges. And you can see the edges on this masking, they're kind of chunky, they're not very smooth. Okay, and um, I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna go up a level. So you can see when you go up a level, it's subdividing your entire object by four. It's multiplying it by four. So now if I do a, a mask, you can see that it's a little cleaner, a little smoother. And when I go to blur the mask, it's going to blur nicer, okay? And the higher you go in subdivision levels, so I'm gonna go to the highest, and when I initially mask, it's really, it has really nice clean edges because there are so many dots and it allows you to make an, a nice tight mask. But when I go to blur it, see it doesn't blur very well, it's, it's slower because there are, the dots are so dense that it's, take, it's taking longer to blur across the edges. So what I like to do is I like to go down to the lowest subdivision level or even just one up, so like level two or something, then do a mask on that, on that level. Okay, even though it's chunkier, that's fine. And then hit blur. Here, I wanna mask out the center. Zinx Labs must have sent Michael Pavlovich one. They sent a, they, they sent a lot out for, to review. Okay, see, so when I, bl when I blur this mask, it gives me a very nice fall off. And then when I invert this mask, see, I'm trying to just, I only want to adjust these eyes, okay? So I'm trying to get a nice fall off around the eyes because I'm going to move them all together. So this is how I like to scale my eyes up and down or in and out or whatever I want to do with them, say, because eyes are difficult to get right in the first place. So usually you won't find um, you won't find your eye scale until after you've added everything. Okay. Is there a way to get a more aggressive blur grow mask option? I feel like when I'm on a higher polygon density, they barely do anything. D Darabo, this is this is the way. So this is this is how you get um, better smoothing on. Uh, higher resolutions. Now, my buddy, my buddy Ronnie Rocks, he he showed me uh, he showed me one way that's kind of uh, it's kind of a hack workaround, and that is um, basically you can zoom your object if it's high density. You zoom your object way out. So this is the highest level density. I'm going to zoom it. I'm gonna zoom it way out. Okay, and then, and then if I do, it's kind of hard to see it at this small level, but if I do my masking at this level, it makes it blurrier. <laughs> it's, it's difficult because you're so far out and you can't even see what you're doing, but that's kind of a hack workaround way. But the way I like to do it is add, uh, Z remesh it, add lower levels, add sub, subdivision levels, 
Um, so, yeah. So that then when you when you mask it off, then it will blur much cleaner, much faster, much nicer. See, watch this when I after I mask this off and I hit blur. See how smooth it goes really quickly. So just have lower density um, mesh meshes and then go down in subdivision levels, mask that instead of masking your highest level. Okay, that's, that's how I do it anyway. Okay, so now um, I wanna move these eyes. <laughs> MR, so uh, yeah, I'm not Ryan, I'm Shane Olson. So um, sometimes if one of the streamers uh, misses a session, it kind of messes up the naming for all the people after the person who missed their session. So yeah, so now I'm Ryan and whoever's after me is gonna be Shane and yeah. So there's no way to really, it's all manually named. So it's kind of a pain in the butt for uh, the folks at ZBrush to do everything to keep up on it. So, okay, I'm going to open up this, uh, it's called Transpose All Selected Subtools. And it respects masking and it respects um, all of these subtools over here. So basically it works with the control shift visualization. So I can show all or show none. And it shows you this kind of transparent look, right? And so all the stuff that I wanna manipulate, I wanna bring back to solid. So I'm gonna hold down control plus shift, tap on the head because I wanna move that, tap on the eyelids, the eyes, the pupils and the eyelashes. So these are the things that I want to scale. And I put the gizmo roughly in the center of the eyeball that I want to scale. And now I can test it. So see, I can move these eyes up and down. This is such a game, game changer for me because back in the day before this, uh, this, this Paul Gabriel likes to call it pizza boxes. Before this thing existed, you would either have to merge all of your subtools into one subtool and then move it that way or use the T pose mesh master, the, the pose, the pose master to do it and hide and show things, which was kind of a pain in the butt or, you know, just have to move every sub or sub tool one by one. And it was just a major pain in the butt. So now that we have these, uh, uh, pizza boxes, now we can scale everything all together and make sure you have local symmetry turned on. And check this out. I can scale these eyes up and down really easily. And it is kind of messing with my, my symmetry here. So I better be careful with that. I'm actually gonna mask off the center line to make sure I do not mess up that symmetry line. So let's do that really quick. There we go. Now it shouldn't mess it up. There we go. Okay. So I just wanted to make these smaller, higher, and I can rotate them a little bit. I can rotate them this way if I want to. Yeah, it's just, it, it makes it so it's, it's very, um, it's powerful, it's powerful. Okay. I got a Zinx Lab through school. It's the first tablet of its kind I've ever owned and I find it's very user friendly. I prefer the thicker pen out of the two. I don't know much about the remote, but I'm sure I'll be investing in one in the future. If I'm correct, it's a hotkey. Yeah, it is a hotkey remote. It works pretty well. Okay, cool. Thanks, Nightbot. <laughs> okay. So now that we're done with this and we've moved the eyes and we, if, if, we, if we like what they look like and like the location, then we can be done with them and then turn off the pizza boxes, clear the mask, go up in subdivision levels and we're done. Now, um, part, of, uh, part, part of this um, process though, the Z remeshing to projecting, sometimes you'll lose a little bit of your detail. So see how it's kind of, made some of my edge work softer. So I can just go back in here now and just kind of cut, cut more of that detail back in. And this is, this is one of the reasons I really like a Cintiq. This is what I'm talking about. It's, it's one-to-one, -one. I'm touching the, the art directly so I can be very precise in how I'm cutting in these wrinkles.
Hi, Sergi. If you look at the sketch, the ear is sharper at the top and the deflection of the neck is... Yep, I'm working on going through and making it look closer to the concept right now. So just so you know, this is about two hours worth of work from two weeks ago. And this is just... So now I'm kind of going through and 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 making like m looking at my measurements and checking everything so but i appreciate it yeah and the ear is next i wanted to adjust those eyes i want to bring these brows in a little bit more and i really like having subdivision levels because then i can go up and down with them and adjust things Now this eyebrow is kind of hanging off, which it is right here too, <laughs> the way Josh drew it. But I just want to get these brows closer into these eyes. I mean, they're almost they're almost touching, right? They're so close. And another thing you could do is. Um, mask this portion of the eye off just so you don't accidentally push push it too much oops let's see okay hey there welcome to the stream Okay. Just want to get this uh, mask a little better right here. And then blur it slightly. That way I can use my move brush and pull this whole thing over the top of the eye without messing it up. I'm going to move the brows down too. Okay. Yeah, those eyes still feel a little too big, but I think I'm just going to live with them. I'm going to pull up this mouth. <laughs> this guy makes me laugh every time. So funny. And then this collar. I actually want to bring it up and rotate it a bit. Now let's push his ear. I kind of want to make it bigger. And again, I can go down in subdivision levels so I can move a lot more. If this were clay, I would say I could, I could move a lot more material faster. Also, I have to give a shout out, and I know he doesn't, he doesn't really stop by my channel, but he's a phenomenal sculptor. Um, my friend Damon Bard, it's his birthday today. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to Damon. Happy birthday, Damon. If you haven't seen his work, I suggest you check it out. He worked on uh, Kung Fu Panda 2. He's a, he does previs in, in clay. He does do some zebra stuff as well, but phenomenal sculptor. Uh, 
Okay, now... I like this kind of this... Uh, this bit of brow flesh above his eyebrows. Hey Sarah, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to kind of just inflate this area to start building it up. Finally able to join. Well, welcome. Glad you could make it. Looks like I'm fighting against it. Yeah, I got. I have some poles in here that I'm fighting against a little bit. Let's pull them up and make them work for us. That's a little better. Okay. So how is everyone doing today, by the way? It's very hot here. It is a desert that I live in. I live in a desert. And uh, my friend Matthew Armstrong sent me a, a meme on the phone. He's like, I, re I remember when fire season used to be called summer. <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there's a, there's a lot of fires during the summer here in Utah. I live in Utah. So just north of, just north of Arizona. Arizona is a bit hotter than here even. Let's flip this guy this way. What rendering engine do I prefer? Um, I have a lot. I, I, in my, <laughs> the, I'm just going to say the rendering engine that I prefer is the one that I can easily use <laughs> without much effort. And that has been Keyshot. Um, it's also been like Blender between Cycles and uh, uh, Eevee. I, I really like the, having the ability to go back and forth between real and scanline renders. Um, I really like Marmoset for the real time. I haven't used Arnold um, and I have not used Redshift. So I'm, I'm anxious to try out Redshift from Maxon. See how it goes. So I'm going to use this cloth brush. Hmm, it's not what I want. It's too sharp. Why is it too sharp? Um, Redshift is a. Um, it's it's a renderer made by Maxon, the company that purchased ZBrush. I've heard good things. I just haven't tried it yet. Yeah, Marmoset, I like Marmoset a lot because it's kind of like the Unreal Engine because it is a game engine that they turned into a, a character viewer back in the day. Um, and I, yeah, I really like the ease of use of Marmoset. It's really nice. Hey Rob, welcome. Let's see. Let's get one more here. I'll make it smaller and just kind of fall off.
<laughs> I love how many wrinkles this guy has. He just makes me laugh. Funny, funny. I take this one further, I think. Okay. Now, eventually, when I pose him, I'm going to kick the cigarette off to the side so it's not just straight out in front of him. Um, yeah, I'll kick it off to his left side when eventually when it's uh, when it's posed. Okay, let's see here. Let's work on this collar a little bit more. <laughs> Utah has coyote and roadrunner landscapes. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, we don't really have roadrunners here. Um, but, I mean, it, I know what you're saying. It does kind of look like the Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. Uh, that's for sure. That's kind of where it came from. But we have um, a lot of national parks here uh, because there's it's such a unique landscape. Um, like there's arches all over the place down south in, in southern Utah. Yep, Moab. Moab. Moab is like the, the mountain biker's dream. They have the Slick Rock Trail down there. Okay, you know, I'm going to take this and remove a bunch of these lines. Let's see. What's going on here? Let's see. Um, how material you use in your design? Um, I don't really understand the question. Short motion? Uh, maybe... Are you asking me how do I use my material? I only use one material, typically, sometimes two, but typically only one, and it is uh, Skin Shade 4, which is right here. And the reason I like Skin Shade 4 is because it allows me to see my poly paint clear, se you know, semi-clear. Um, so that's why I like this Skin Shade 4 the most. Uh, that's why it's on my user interface, which, by the way, you can get for free if you want. Uh, you can go over to 3dcharacterworkshop.com, and I give away all my brushes and my user interface for free. You just scroll down about halfway, and you can find it. All right. Wrinkles is one of the most difficult thing to do for me because once you add subsurface scattering, you find out if you carved enough so that it doesn't fade out too much. I don't really use subsurface scattering too much, and if I do, it's just... Just t a tiny little bit. Tiny little bit. Oh, you were stationed at Hill Air Force Base. Okay, nice. Very cool. Yeah, I like Hill Air Force Base. Thanks, Neil. Okay. So I'm trying to get rid of these edges. There it goes. Okay. Let's just get rid of that one and slide these down. Slide. There we go. I can add subdivision levels. Add some thickness. Let's insert 
a few edges here, maybe some here. There we go. Okay. This guy looks like a vacuum salesman. <laughs> like from the 50s or something. Like those guys that would go from door to door, like selling Hoover vacuums. I think my, my uh, grandpa used to do that. Let's pull this collar out and down. Okay. And then we can build a, a tie. So let's grab this piece. Uh, let's go with this one. And reset the gizmo first so I can snap it. There we go. Okay, that's what I want. And let's split unmasked points. So it's in its own subtool. And let's save this. Um, how to recover symmetry in a posed character? Can I do this with a, with stager? Uh, not really. Um, in a posed character, if it's posed asymmetrically, um, I'm not really sure other than just... That's kind of a big question. If you have a pose character and you're trying to make it back into a T-pose character, I probably wouldn't do that if I could help it. Um, but basically, you would have to just do it one piece at a time. You would have to like unravel the pose and like with using masking and the pose tool and stuff like that. Um, so it would take a long time and a lot of effort. Hey, what's going on, Ashley? How you doing? A cubed in the his house. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, this guy's a lot of fun. <laughs> I I like how he's turning out. I started him two weeks ago. Well, I I didn't stream last week because of the July fourth, but two weeks ago. So hey Tom, fellow Utah here. Well welcome. I'm um, still fairly new to ZBrush. How did you snap the sphere to the rest of your mesh? Uh, so I just chose a, a, a an object and I used my insert multi-mesh brush, which is this right here. Here, check this out. I have a little new drawing tool. This right here. Okay, so that is my um, insert multi-mesh brush and it has a whole bunch of primitives you can see them up here. There's like a bunch of spheres and a couple cubes and a cylinder and an appendage brush. So um, so you can, basically when you, when you use that, you just click on the surface and insert a, a shape and it sticks to the surface where you start to draw like this. That's it. So just in the head, um, you're talking about symmetry just in the head. So uh, yeah, I would just use, well, I would get rid of any subdivision, subdivisions in it. And then I would use uh, mirror and weld. Mirror and weld is the easiest way to fix symmetry. Okay, let's see. He still looks like an old an old rolling stone to me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, do you recommend creating a base mesh for a hard surface game asset in ZBrush or some other 3D program like Maya, Max, and Blender and then add details? Um, so that's a good question. It depends on the object. Uh, the, what I love about ZBrush is that you get, um, you get live Booleans. 
So live booleans, if you're wanting to create some hard surface stuff very quickly, live booleans are my favorite thing to use because it's just so fast and it's live and it's non-destructive and I can just go through and build something like a gun or something really, really quickly. Um, whereas if I'm doing it in say Max or Maya, it's gonna take me some time to model it out by hand. Um, and it also depends on what you're gonna be doing with the asset, if it's gonna be de deforming at all. Um, but you can get away with a lot, you know, just doing uh, with, with live Booleans and then using Z Remesher or some kind of a remeshing utility. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do uh, retopology by hand when you're done with it. But um, live booleans are a great way to, uh, to experiment with, with your objects and with your designs. Yep, sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, yeah, the live booleans is a life, lifesaver for work revisions. Yep, yep. I mean, they're, they're non-destructive. So if your art director comes over and looks over your shoulder and is like, hey, can you make this thicker and that thinner and remove this piece and add this piece? It's really, really easy to do with, without uh, too much effort. And A-Cubed, how are you? How, how, you, how have you been? How are things? Okay, I'm gonna make this tie a really dark gray, I think. Like something like this. I can duplicate this object. Good, just been working, working is good. Gotta pay those bills. I love live booleans after working with Maya for such a long time. It's really hard to get in Z modeler. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, use the workflow that works best for you. And, um, if you have time to learn it, then do it. But if you don't need to, uh, there's no reason to honestly. Um, <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of, uh, people joking around saying, um, using the term cowboy, like, ZBrush Cowboy or Maya Cowboy or, you know, whatever. Um, and what that means is trying to do everything in one program. And my advice is just to use the program that works best for what you're trying to do. Don't force yourself to, to use, use a program just because you want to use it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're more comfortable doing hard surface in another program, do it. But if you want to stay inside of ZBrush and use live boolean do that it doesn't it doesn't really matter finally getting to do a lot more drawing and painting for work too other than just being a ZBrush cowboy yeah <laughs> I, I have to say, I, I am a bit of a ZBrush cowboy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it's <laughs> more, more so just, just because I'm lazy and I don't wanna leave. <laughs> if I could do everything in one program, I would. But ZBrush is really, really, really good at digital sculpting. So that's, that's kind of the one thing. And it's good at other things too. It's not great, but it's good. Like rendering or retopology or things like that, you know? You wouldn't want to force yourself to, to do those things here when you don't need to. Unless you're after a certain look, like uh, the look that Dan Eater gets with his, with his stuff. Oh my goodness. And if you haven't seen that, you should watch the... Um, the image breakdown that uh, the 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 ZBrush um, Maxon did with Dan Dan Eater Eder I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. So you've started using solely ZBrush more and more. You're you're turning into a cowboy, <laughs> cowboy cowgirl. All right. 
there's nothing wrong with that either, you know. And I think there a lot there is a lot to be said about enjoying what you're doing too. Like if you enjoy, enjoy using ZBrush, by all means use it. <laughs> Straight up. Okay. There's nothing wrong. Holy cow. That's like, look at all the words. <laughs> You're covering my screen. That's funny. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, to be honest. It's just different career paths. Like if you need to do, oh, if you need to do a final model and textures for AAA games and VFX, then OFC, you need more programs. But I find some people get caught up in their own roles and apply that to everyone, make fun of them for their own art path and where they fit in the pipeline. Yeah, don't do that. The Dan Eater hair tr breakdown hair trick was awesome. When they're looking for render and left with new, yeah, for sure, for sure. There you go. Not that you can copy and paste it off the screen, but Hey, comics. <laughs> Having to use multiple programs can be expensive. Doing it in all in one program is ideal. Yeah, but there's there's very few programs that can do it all and you know and do it well. You get the jack of all trades thing, and yeah. And then there's just some studios that get stuck in their ways, and you have to have to conform to what they use in their pipeline, and and that's there's nothing wrong with that either. Okay. Like if a studio's using Maya and they've just taken a whole bunch of time over the years to make a whole bunch of Python scripts and then all of a sudden, you know, some people come by and say, why don't you use this program instead? Well, they're like, well, we're too invested um, because we've spent all this time paying all these programmers to write these Python scripts and we're not about to leave. You know, it's a big investment. It's not e as easy to change or... But, you know, with character modeling in particular, or, or modeling in general, it doesn't matter what program you use, honestly, because at the end of the day, you're, you're ending up with um, geometry. And geometry can be read by just about every program out there. I mean, that's kind of how it works, right? So it doesn't matter where you create the things you're making Um, as long as you can deliver the final asset how the, the people want it, you know? It doesn't matter. Hey, Tenchi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Feel as long as I'm able to efficiently provide to the pipeline, anything is viable, but I see people using Z Modeler. <laughs> A truck with no brakes and it makes me want to do the same. Uh, yeah, you know, just because it's, it's fast, you know, it can be fast once you get into it. Um, but again, there's nothing wrong with like using what you know. If you have time to learn it, sure, great. But if not, who cares? And what I'm using now, it's called the topology brush. I like to use the topology brush for very specific case uses. Yeah, just build up that muscle memory here and there. Yep, for sure. Um, you know, and taking your object to another program takes time, right? If you, if you have to export your object somewhere else, like say Maya, and then there, there could be scale issues involved where, you know, you, you leave um, leave the program and it throws off the scale. <laughs> That's just, that just makes you cry. Makes me cry. Okay. Why isn't this giving me what I want? Yeah. So this, this topology brush, it's very, very useful, but as you can see, it can kind of be finicky occasionally. So I'm going to draw one more line, right? Well, why is it not working for me? 
I just need, I want to split this down the middle. And this, this polygon is not behaving. I hate using handfuls of different files. Makes my eyes crossed. <laughs> yeah, junk.obj or FBX. FBX is another one, right? It's like, oh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. All right. Well, you know what? Um, I just want to make this little cut here. Let's see if I can go up like this. Why is it not? See, sometimes it just doesn't want to behave. It doesn't want to give me... This uh, topology brush, the, how it works is, can you see these orange and black uh, dots, like these uh, little click lines? I don't know what you'd call them. Um, it will place the dot, the green dots are all you care about. See these green dots right here? That's all you care about. And ZBrush wants to pop the line into, in between the orange and black little ticks. So if I draw a line across this orange, it's gonna pop. See it pop over to where the orange and black line crisscrosses. And for some reason, it's not wanting to uh, give me a polygon here. You can tell when, it, when it's working is when it turns orange. <laughs> Crosswalks for ants. And I do get better results when I use a smaller brush. I'm just gonna rewind here and start over with a smaller brush. See if I can get better results because that's just gonna drive me nuts. So basically if you use a smaller brush, you're giving yourself more of an opportunity to not have that happen. Yeah, okay, that'll work. Let's see if that works. That works. Okay, so I'm getting these green dots. There we go, that's what I want. Sometimes if it's not working, you have to delete it and start again. Goodness, who's drawing these lines? And if you guys didn't know, Ashley is another, well, another. Ashley is, a, is an amazing modeler, and she's also a live streamer here on ZBrush live streams. And she goes live on Wednesdays. Another. <laughs> and she makes incredible monsters from her brain and her knowledge. And it's amazing to watch. Actually, I learn something every single time I watch your stuff. Just like the techniques that you're just like, I don't know how you find them or where you come up with them. It's like, I'm just going to pull this out of my... <laughs> and it works well. Okay. Whoa. So see how this didn't give me a green dot? Why not? Give me a green dot. I gotta draw through this green one here. Nope. There we go, all right. That's what I want, there we go, okay. See, why was that so hard? Hey Thomas. Yeah, I mean, she takes breaks. Just like the rest of us. <laughs> Brooked fire and nonsense. I've never heard that before. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Now we have a caller. There we go. Okay, what's going on back here? Not 
Not a fan of that. Okay. Let's fix it. How do you fix something like this? Well, you turn off local symmetry. You turn off symmetry. You use your move brush and move everything, all the offending dots over to the right. And then hit mirror and weld and it fixes it just like that. There we go. Clean. I think Monty's is the brains behind it all. <laughs> Got to turn on symmetry. There we go. <laughs> Monty. Monty is Ashley's pupper. He's so dang cute. Marshmallow butt. <laughs> what? Oh, goodness. You know, as dogs do. <laughs> uh. Okay. I'm just going to paint this on. Hey, my Brent, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. It's going rather well, thank you. Wow, this gray is kind of the same color as my background, so it's kind of getting a little hidden, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this guy makes me laugh. Again, I think I think he's like a total Hoover vacuum salesman. On a smoke break. <laughs> oh goodness. Come on. Pop his collar up off of his shirt below. All right. <laughs> Reminds me of when Joey from Friends can only buy a couple of the encyclopedias to pretend to be clever, <laughs> dropping useless knowledge. Okay, I'm going to try to put some support edges in here and see how it goes. Because I want this a little tighter on the edge. But this is the tricky bit. Because as soon as I insert an edge here, it will make this look good, but it will make this look pinched. He only bought V. <laughs> Funny. That's not bad. Not bad. Just trying to get this to look sharper.
this doesn't look the best. See what, how you would really want to do it is like actually um, apply the dynamic thickness and then crease the edges, which I might just do that instead. Let's do that. <laughs> Try to insert a vivisection in the conversation. <laughs> oh man, that show. Okay, so let's do, thanks. Yeah, Josh did a great job. It's a really nice sketch. Um, what are the orange dots poking out? These are representing where the original actual mesh exists in space. So if I go down to this, the bottom level, um, this is just being dynamically subdivided and it's being dynamically um, thickened. So uh, if I hit D on my keyboard, that turns on dynamic. You can see dynamic right here. That's kind of like hitting three on your keyboard when you're in Maya. It's just going to... Um, give you uh, subdivision levels that are temporary. So it's gonna show you what it's going to look like if you add subdivision levels. Um, and then you can also add dynamic thickness, which is here. Well, let me show you where it really exists. Because this is my user interface that I give away for free. If you wanna go get it, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, give it away for free. And all that information is up here. Um, so dynamic is here thickness, and this is uh, smooth subdivision levels. And you can also find it in the geometry menu here. So if I open this up, you can see dynamic, there's thickness, yeah, all the same stuff. <laughs> I agree, yeah, Keith Richards vibe, totally. Yep, if you wanna see more of Josh's work, you can check that out. Josh Hunter Black over on Instagram. Okay, so um, I want the dynamic thickness, but I do not want the dynamic subdivision levels. So what I can do is I can go to the or the smooth subdivision levels and turn it down to zero. And now it's just giving me the thickness. It's kind of like extruding. Um, and then I can hit apply and it will add that thickness. Now, um, I can turn dynamic on again and turn off the thickness and turn the smooth levels back up. And now I can go through and crease stuff. So, um, let's see, that's a question out of ZBrush, but what's this software you use to draw lines over the screen? Oh, this is my new, it's, it's, a, it's a Mac software called um, ScreenBrush. And it works, it works quite well. Yeah, I can, I can draw lines like this and lines like this and arrows like this. Yeah, so I, I do a lot of teaching and I wanna be able to draw on my screen. So um, yeah, I really, really like it. I found it recently. You kept, let's see. I kept using Q mesh and messing up my normals. Yeah, this is a better way because you can see actually what, what it's doing before committing. Okay. When's our next student live event? Um, I'm not sure. I need to do one, Tenchi. Okay, so um, I'm going to crease. So I'm going to go into my Z modeler brush, crease edge loops. So I'm going to go here here. Well, I can do a crease poly groups. So let's see, crease PG right there. That puts a crease around all the poly groups. And then I just want to crease the corners. So I'll crease that one. And then down around the bottom. I might let that one go. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we have super crisp, clean, buttery edges. They're a little too crisp. So what we can do here is see this crease level set to three. I'm gonna set it down to two. And that just means that um, ZBrush will just hold on to the creases for the first two subdivision levels. And on the third subdivision level, it's gonna let it go and it'll allow it to smooth more. So I'm actually gonna 
set this to four. And you can see how it gives us a nice smoothly creased edge instead of a super crisp one. How'd you draw those arrows? Yeah, like I said, that's just a, um, it's just a, an, a screen overlay program that I have for my Mac. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so now you can get a nice, clean, smooth edged thing. And I can do the same thing with this collar. So let's, let's try it again. See how it's just a single sided but I want to get rid of this one, this edge loop here, and this edge loop, and then do the same thing. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to turn this to zero, and here's my thickness, right? And I want to apply that, so you just turn your smooth subdivisions all the way down, hit apply, and now I have this um, thickness for real. And now when I hit uh, dynamic again, it's going to apply that thickness again, but now I don't want it. So I turn my thickness down to zero and turn my smooth subdivision levels up to four. And now it's not creased, so it looks like this. Okay, and again, all these orange dots are showing where the actual mesh is. So if I see, look at these two points right here. Okay, so when I add dynamic subdivisions, you can see there's the two points right there. These are the, this is the real geometry that you're editing. And this is just showing you a preview what it's gonna look like after you uh, subdivide, okay? Okay, so now, uh, since I have polygroups, just a shortcut is crease polygroups, so crease PG. And you can find that under the button path, tool geometry crease polygroups, okay? So I'll just crease those, but it does not crease these edge, these corners, because there aren't polygroups here. So I need to go do those by hand. Let's go crease, edge, click here, click here, and then hit D, and there we go. Super clean, sharp edges. Boom. And these will print very, very well, 3D printing, super well. Okay. The drawover and arrows are super helpful when Shane is doing the acceleration program feedback session. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm, I'm, I am running a, an accelerator program uh, in addition to my regular workshop. And um, it's been going really well. I have some of my students from that in here watching right now. Uh, but basically, I help students go through the, the workshop program and speed through it quicker and give feedback on their work. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Very, very re rewarding. And I have to give a shout out to uh, Brad. Brad's one of my students. He just got uh, uh, kind of highlighted in an article recently, which was really cool. Thanks. Okay. Just gonna add a little, little, uh, yeah, the article that Brad got highlighted in was not, was not ZBrush related, so I can't talk about it too much, but I just wanted to give him a shout out here because that's, that's a pretty cool feat. Okay, so I wanted to, um, wanted to kind of mess with his hair and see what we can do with his little, little curly whatever is going on up here. <laughs> and I think I want to darken his eyebrows Let's go a darker, more saturated brown. There we go. Something like that. And then I already downloaded this brush. 
It's this FB curl brush, and you can get it from FB stands for Funky Bunnies, and it's Chris Whitaker from uh, from from Funky Bunnies, and um, it comes with all of these different insert multi mesh curve based curls. So I can basically pick one of these and then draw on the surface. Now, your, your mesh has to be not subdivided. So I can't draw on the surface of this head because ZBrush will bark at me um, and it won't work. Actually, it's, yeah, see it says the mesh is composed with multiple subdivision levels. Um, so it's not gonna work. So whenever you get that message, all you have to do is go to your subtool menu duplicate your object and then uh, delete your subdivision levels. Okay, so if you go into geometry, I'm just gonna go down a couple, delete lower, delete higher, and now we have a mesh that does not have subdivision levels that we can use to draw the hair on. Okay, so I just wanna draw a couple curls. Oh, looks like they are going from thin to thick and I don't want that, so I'm gonna go into Stroke Curve Modifiers and Curve Fall Off, and it's going from thin to thick. I just want them the same uniform thickness throughout the whole thing, there you go. Um, and I'm just gonna look at a couple of these curls and see which one I want. So after you've drawn a curve like this, you can pick a different one and then click on the curve itself and it will replace the object with that curl. Let's do a more, there you go, like this one. So, yep, there's Brad's article. It is for a different program, so I don't wanna highlight it too much, but yeah, congrats, Brad, that's cool. That just goes to show you can use my program for other software too. Okay, this one's a more, this one's fun. This one's more round. And there's also, I could use fiber mesh too, to, to make it work. Looks like an alien. <laughs> okay, and uh, you can increase the size of your brush to get bigger curls. Maybe not that big, something like this. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend um, fiber mesh for 3D printed stuff, but it's, it is fun to play with for sure. Okay, I am going to hide the original head now and delete it. And I'm trying to, I just want a couple of curls. So I think I'm gonna make it bigger and just do a super short yeah, something like that. Maybe not so big. <laughs> okay. This is making me laugh. All right. So one, yeah, just little curls like that. And if you want to get rid of this curve and commit, you just click on it. Um, I'm going to split unmasked points. I had a fun with it with my Rockstar scope, but it's not friendly in other programs for rendering. So even if you're trying to just get an image, you're stuck in ZBrush for renders. Well, yes and no. So you can push it to, to KeyShot and it'll actually render in KeyShot quite well. Um, and you can use the curves that Fiber Mesh generates and you can use them in other programs, the curves, like in Maya, like Shave and a Haircut, you can use the curves in, in that program. So, but yeah, for the most part, you need to kind of stick in ZBrush. Okay. Let's see, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. Let's go like a dark gray so they don't look like dookies. Um, and then maybe turn um, symmetry off. Uh, 
let's see, curl. I like this curl, but I'm trying to get it to... I might use the, the, the tube curl brush. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still just kind of trying to decide what I want to do with these. Okay. Maybe this, maybe this triple curl will be better. Yeah, so fiber mesh will actually create curves. I was thinking that, but didn't want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Here, let's just try it. We got some time, right? Yeah, we got about a half an hour left. So let's just mess around with some fiber mesh. Let's try it out. Um, okay, let's, let's hide this. Go to our head. Okay, and I don't know if it works with um, multiple subdivisions or not. We might have to make a new head. Let me, let's do a, let's save this out. Yeah, save it. Okay. And Neil, I think I found the solution to our audio issues and that makes me happy. <laughs> okay. Let's try this. Fiber mesh is really fun to play with and you can make it so it's geometry instead of like fibers in the fiber sense. Um, and ZBrush comes with a whole bunch of fibers you can mess around with. If you open up this light box by hitting comma on your keyboard, you can go to fibers. It's, um, yeah, yeah, Cricket, the, the popcorn, the popcorn problem. Yep, yep. So my, my voice was sounding like popcorn, so. All right, Thomas, thanks for hanging out. Sounds good. Okay, so, um, yeah, if you, if you look at the fibers right here, um, I actually, I can circle it. That's even better. Look at that. Fibers right there. Okay, if you click on that and go into uh, this tab, you can see there's a whole bunch of fibers that you can mess with. And there's also fibers that other people have tried to uh, make and play with. So we, you, we can just try some. <laughs> there you go. Look at this one. He's just like, poof. here, let me lighten up the background um, so we can see what's happening a little bit better. And if you want to lighten up this background, you just pick a color first, like something like a gray, and then go to uh, document and click on the word back right here. And it will change the background. <laughs> Done, ship it. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. And it, you can't really tell what it, it's going to look like 100% for sure until you hit render. So let's just render this out and see. It's going to have really harsh shadows. Yeah, and really harsh um, ambient occlusion here. But <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, let's turn occlusion off for a second. <laughs> Raise your head. Yep. Okay. So, um, the, so what we can start to do if we uh, like if if we like where this fiber mesh is starting, um, basically what we can do is go to the fiber mesh tab down here and start to mess with it. <laughs> it looks even more like you. That's true, Mark. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, and then th there's this modifiers. Okay, <laughs> looks like a liberal person. <laughs> yep, it does. It does, it does. Now you can see the mask back here that I painted on the surface and I don't necessarily wanna see that mask. So what I can do is go to masking right here and then just click on this uh, view mask and it will hide it. And that way I can actually see what it will look like and you can see how the skin through it. Um, but now what I can do is uh yeah leave it like this i i might do a version and just leave it leave it this way but i want to kind of tone it down a little bit and see if we can get it to be uh kind of closer to the concept at least somewhat right <laughs> okay or control h oh for uh hide right yeah control h i always forget about that sarah so control h will hide the masking okay um, okay, so if I go to back to fiber mesh, um, now I can start to mess with some of these parameters. Like max fibers is the amount of coverage that you have. So basically I can turn this down and it'll make fewer hairs. Um, 
whatever. <laughs> oh, see, it's just funny. It's just funny. Oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> I love this guy. All right, and then uh, so this length profile is basically the thickness and thinness that the profile is going to have. It doesn't have anything going on right now. It's basically the same, the same thickness throughout the whole thing. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of looking at. So here's the width profile. It kind of just goes up and down. Um, now coverage is how thick the hair itself is. Okay, so see, I can make I can make the hairs thicker, and they actually have a texture on them. I don't necessarily want this texture. So you can see the texture; it's getting uh, multiplied down. Um, down the, the length of the strand, and I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to click on this and say texture off. <laughs> and now it's going to turn the texture off. And now it's going to use the color. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. And now it's going to use the color from, see, the green as the root and the red as the, the hair. So let's do, like a, let's do like a dark gray. And then click on this red and do like a, a light gray, maybe a lighter gray. <laughs> looks like a like trees like a forest or something let me see what happens if I render this out what it's really looking like ah it's pretty much the same it's weird that it gets so thin in here and then it goes thicker and that's because of this width profile here I don't necessarily want it to do that so I'm going to adjust this width profile to not do that as much there we go okay <laughs> just the roots. Yeah, just like root. So um, I can change the length. So the length is right here. And I just want to see what... <laughs> yeah, it just looks like a pie. I, I like it. I like the, the length being super crazy, but... Now it's just looking spaghetti-ish. Okay, um, I'm going to reduce the amount of max fibers... I'm just, again, I'm trying to get it to look like this a little bit more. Where's the, yeah, max fibers, a little more, <laughs> just four. There we go, something like this. <laughs> I think the, so the coverage, this should be the thickness. I don't know why they called it coverage. Okay, and it's kind of crooked like a tree. I. We can add more subdivision levels going down the length of it. Um, let's see. Mass previs, no. Go back to modifiers. And we can add some gravity to it if we want to or not. We can make it raise up a little higher. Um, let's see. Okay, so segments. This is how many times it's being... Uh, cut down the length so I can crank that up and then profile is how many segments are going around the thickness of it so I can turn it down to like say four and that will make it behave better because it's like it's like a square instead of round so it's fewer polygons <laughs> yeah Yeah, because it's wiry. I need it not so wiry. I wish it was less wiry. Let's see. My tangent. Some of these I don't quite understand. Oh, this is the revolve. <laughs> How many times it, it curls around? This is going opposite. Okay. Revolve radius. The judge from right, it totally does, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, sometimes it's, it's a lot of fun to just mess with fiber mesh to see what you get because it's like a, it's like a back, box of chocolates, right? 
So coverage. Let's make it little tiny hairs. There we go. <laughs> you, yeah, it's 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 really fun. Let's see if I see if I if I uh, if I render it. I will tone down these shadows. But if I render it, the hairs are m much less uh, like chunky. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. What I, what, uh, another thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to reduce the, the size of the mask and just make it kind of concentrated in a tighter area so it's not all over, <laughs> all over his head. Oops. Cancel that. Turn on preview again. There we go. <laughs> okay, control H is hide. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to make these curls bigger and I want it a little thicker because it does look, yeah, like that P word. I'm trying to get it not to be that. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so funny. All right, so revolve rate. Let's mess with the revolve rate. Okay, I think that has something to do. There we go, there we go. 25 maybe <laughs> thank you thank you okay <laughs> make sure to water it yeah that's a good point <laughs> I can make it green <laughs> you know that's not <laughs> oh my gosh look at that thing <laughs> oh goodness and I think it's scale, it, the scale is based off of the world size. So I think to make it bigger, I would have to scale him down. I want to test that theory. Yeah, I kind of want to test that theory. Let's try it. Let's try it. You need a decoding ring to figure out the controls? Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> it worked. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna try this. This is this is hilarious, but I wanna try this. Okay, so uh, theory is, if I scale him down, these will stay the same, but get larger, like scale up. Because th there's not really a scale uh, that you can do here. There's You can mess with like length and size and different things like that, but I essentially want what it's giving me here, but just larger. So let's see what I can do. Um, I'm going to send the gizmo home, reset it, open up the pizza boxes, clear it, and then scale him down. Okay, this is still masked, so I got to clear that mask. Okay, let's bring it on down to about here. <clears throat> let's see if my theory is correct. <laughs> uh, it's fun being a barber. Nope, it's not. All right, I'll have to talk to Paul Gabriel about that. But ah, uh, it's actually it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It was it didn't scale as much as I thought it would, but it's not bad. <laughs> Look at it from the side. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, so low, I was actually thinking about that, you know, converting it to a mesh and actually scaling it up that way. That would totally work. The, yeah, that would totally work. Um, but I kind of want to just, we got, we got time. I want to wrangle it a little bit and see what we can do. So uh, let's, me let's mess with the length of it. Now, I can save this. Um, and let's see. So I'm going to save it where it's at and just call it uh, Josh Curly Guy. I don't know. <clears throat> and just save it under Twitch here. Okay, so that's a fiber mesh file. So you can always load it in. Um, or if you like, you know, if you find a, a fiber mesh setting that you like and you want to bring in all the time like this, you can totally save it out and you can share it that way. And then you can open it right here and then just load it in. 
So if you ever make some fiber mesh that you like, you can do it right there. Okay, so um, I want to adjust the length. Length right here. There we go. Josh Brush. I don't know if he'd, he'd like it being called Josh Brush because <laughs> it looks like a bundle of the P word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I can if, say I wanted to print this. I could make it a lot thicker, the coverage. There we go. <laughs> That's actually not, not bad at all. That looks quite close to... Hey, Patrick, how you doing? Okay, and um, once I accept this, so say I like the way... I'm going to actually hit save again because I like this a little better. Fiber 60. Uh, Josh Brush. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit accept. And now it becomes real. And what I mean by it com becomes real is it adds it in here as a subtool and makes it into a mesh. So now we actually have a mesh and it looks like this. And we can hit auto groups and it'll put every single one in its own group. So then we can finally tune it to look a little bit better. <laughs> oh, that cracks me up. And we can also turn on dynamic subdivisions to make it look smoother in preview. So now we, <laughs> we have it look like this. And we can go in here with like, uh, say, uh, inflate if we wanted to, and just inflate like the base of it a little bit more if we wanted to. Um, and see some of the, some of the hairs are kind of like sh getting shoved down into the surface. And we can push them in a little bit more. Let's turn on topological so we only affect the one we touch and just kind of push it down into the, into the surface and say we don't want this loopy one, right? This one right here. So I don't know, is it masked? Okay. What is going on? Now, sometimes I think the fiber mesh at its base gets, uh, gets stuck. See how it's not moving? So I can move it up here, but at the, at the base, it's like, because it's a fiber mesh, it, it sticks it. I don't know how to unstick it. But another thing we can do is just grab everything. Come on. And I think we can just push it down into the head like this. Yeah, that might cause more problems though. Maybe we can rotate it. There we go. Just to get rid of that one loop. <laughs> Man, this cracks me up. Okay. And now we can use um, fiber mesh brushes if we want to, like this groom blower and these groom brushes. Um, it works more, it works better in uh, some modes than others, but let's see. There's a groom. If you push G, you can kind of isolate all of these. And the one I like is this groom lengthen. They do suck. I'm not going to lie. They're not very good. See, it's like, what, what is it? What is this doing? It's like making it go blah, 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 blah. Because it's trying to keep it stuck inside the head. But the groom lengthen is the one that's... Um, it's it's fairly useful. See how I can kind of move everything together and just kind of spread it out if I want to. Yeah, move works better. That's true. <laughs> what needs to be a shirt, Brad? Okay, let me, let's turn off topological. That, that one ma uh, makes it so I can move a hair at a time, but... I just wanted it to be a little bit bigger. Oh, it kind of goes blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Get rid of that little whatever it's doing. Okay. <laughs> All right, ship it. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy's crazy. So, of course, this wouldn't 3D print, right? 
Hey Dan, welcome. How's it going? Oh, let me let me turn on dynamic for this guy. Where did my hairs go? There they are. Okay, let's get rid of this, whatever this is. Delete. Delete. Okay. <laughs> Giggling at your own work is my favorite moment of sculpting, where things just make you happy. Absolutely, right? <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh. Well, if I ever see a, con that's, I totally lean into that too. If I ever see a, a concept that just makes me laugh, right? Um, I, I know I'm just going to have a, a good time sculpting it out. You could print it and do the hairs with one of those 3D pens. Yeah, you could totally do that. You totally could. You can totally see this guy working on a shady government project. Yeah, he's like outside the door having a smoke break, right? He's just like... <laughs> I'm like like security guard kind of. For sure. Okay, let's tune him a little bit more. I do the hair from a wire. Yeah, wire works pretty good. <laughs> it kind of goes blah, blah, blah. It really spoke to my heart. <laughs> okay, let's... Uh, I, I want to get his nostrils a little more like the concept. See if I can do it. Get it a little sharper. And bring this, uh, this, this kind of mouth area. This mouth area is still a separate object. This is not combined in here. Um, he worked with those guys when you worked in the defense industry. Oh, for sure. <laughs> It's like Benny, or, you know, they always have these weird names. Okay. <laughs> so move, I'm going to use AccuCurve and see if I can get this pointed nostril happening here. Okay, what am I doing? And pull this up. Okay, it's just gonna add to that. I don't know if I should use um, AccuCurve yet because it makes a little point in there. Let's just try a smaller brush. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> reminds me of uh, some of the Paul DC work too. I love Paul DC and his stuff. He's just an incredible sculptor. He he occasionally will sculpt on here, ZBrush Live, and he does. He he's just a master at keeping his stuff super clean. And I try my hardest to do to keep it as clean as I can. But man, that guy. If you don't vote for the Josh, you got to vote for the brush. <laughs> Do that hair. <laughs> okay, I want to accentuate that hair a little more by um, <clears throat> making his head a little smaller. And how I can do that is just kind of go down in subdivision levels and just kind of squeeze it in a little more. <laughs> Looks like Bert. Hey, Bert. <laughs> His name's probably Bert. Let's name him Bert. Okay, let's turn on uh, perspective here. Hey, Tim, Dan, how you doing, man? Yes square it up a bit more. Yeah, probably from the side a bit more. It's a good idea. Yeah, let's 
because square is funny. And it's designy. Looks like he's got a cavity, like a... What is going... Oh, it's because the... <laughs> it's because the mesh is still uh, masked off. So I gotta clear that and smooth it down. Oops. Okay. It's like a volcano head. <laughs> What's up, volcano head? It's my nickname in high school. <laughs> There we go. Maybe not so flat. <laughs> just inflate that a little bit. Not that much, just a little. Okay. I know Jojo Ba, that's, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. This guy even has kind of a yellow tinge to his face like Bert. It's like, uh, <laughs> now we just need to make, I'll have Josh draw an Ernie it's got like a, <laughs> uh, like this, you know how they do the semi-realistic versions of Sesame Street characters? <laughs> Let's just bring this in a little bit. Looks like a banana head. What's up, banana head? Hey, Todd, what's going on, man? Oh my goodness, I haven't heard from you forever. How are you? It's a brother of the Muppets Beaker. Yeah, <laughs> join the mafia. Me, me, me. Yeah, it's creepy, uncanny valley st stuff that hits me hard. Just so you guys know, Todd shared, he's... Sorry, Todd. I'm going to call you out, man. He's, he's uh, one of the guys that got me into this. Um, yeah, when, back in the day when, when 3D sculpting wasn't a thing, it was, just, it was just modeling, traditional modeling, I was always absolutely blown away by Todd's stuff. Absolutely blown away. And uh, yeah, it's... So thanks, Todd. Helped me get my start. And now I'm modeling guys like this. <laughs> Let's give him a mouth. Mouth corners. <laughs> Sorry, I just keep laughing at this guy. <clears throat> An LED at the tip of the cigarette and then add some wispy cotton. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 3D Studio Max. That was the tool of the day. <laughs> Be fun. I don't know if I could get a wire and an LED up in there. I'd have to make it thicker. Yeah, dark times. Yeah, Todd. Okay, Todd, I gotta bring this up. Do you remember? I remember my my first uh, my first when I was working with you, like before Glyphics, like before that. And it was like a, it was like a, what was that? What was the name of that game with the uh, vampire guys that that you're known for? What? Oh gosh. Remind me what the name of that is. And I was like trying to make this thing. It was like a, a vampire castle. I was trying to model it in Max and I was having the hardest time and it just totally sucked. Yeah, Soul Reaver. That's it, Soul Reaver. Go check out Todd's stuff with Soul Reaver. It's awesome. But I was trying to model it. It's funny too, because now that I think about it in ZBrush, if I could model it in ZBrush, it'd be like I could model it with my eyes closed and backwards and you know from across the room. But back then in Max, and I was just like, I didn't want to show it to you because I knew it was just total suckage <laughs> and you're just like I showed it to you and I got the reaction I was like you know you're just like oh man I'm gonna have to do this myself because <laughs> this sucks so bad 
Oh, man. <clears throat> but it was a it was a good learning experience for sure. No, uh, I didn't work on Soul Reaver. Todd, Todd worked on the cover art. I don't know if he did any of the... Uh, did you do any of the game characters, Todd, or just the, the cover art and the poster stuff? Like marketing shots, mainly. <laughs> Sacrificed innocent critters have access to ZBrush, right? Right? Oh my gosh. Cover art and cinematics, that's right. And then I worked with Todd at Glyphix on um, Advent Rising, a game for Xbox. Let's see if I can make this this actually look look semi functional. Like his lip is going up and around that thing. It's really weird, but. <laughs> Again, it makes me laugh. There we go. Let's see if we can push this down and make it look like two, two lips coming together so you don't see the light catching that valley down in there. I kind of want to curl it down to make it feel like the concept more. So it's like following the arc. One of your childhood favorite games, really. Nice. It's funny because when I worked on that game, I was, I was, uh, I worked on it as an animator, not a modeler. I mean, I modeled a few small little things, but not, not too much. Um, did a lot of mocap. That was fun. That was a fun project for sure. Great people. Okay, I'm going to see if I can uh, pull this in. So a lot of the people ended up working at a company called Chair and they're now, um, they got purchased by Epic and they're working on Fortnite stuff. And a lot of, a lot of my friends from Glyphix and Avalanche work at Chair now. It's funny because people in Utah in this industry, they just move around. <laughs> they just go from studio to studio. Trying to remember, I think Glyphix was my either third or fourth studio. I think third. Out of six. <laughs> there we go. I really want to point, make his lip all pointy. <clears throat> so I hope you're doing well, Todd. It's been a long time, man. We should do some lunch. I think the last time I, I saw you was with, uh, with Russ during his like trolley square thing. That's a lot. That's too long. Very fun model reminds me of a de detective from old movies. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you did? You saw Russ? I haven't talked to him forever either. 
Um, I kind of live near him now, which is funny. We haven't we haven't uh, spoken for a while. Need to reach out to him. Yeah, he just kind of lives right down the street from me ish. Man, I'm just making a mess of this. I need to smooth it out. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to pull this whole thing in. Because I feel like it's a bit too on the long end. Maybe like this. And then pull his nose in. I, I went, I tend to go too far with things to start with and then kind of bring them in, you know. Like his nose. His nose is quite longish. Oh, come on. <clears throat> Eddie Valiant with the Judge Doom. It's been a while since I saw Judge Doom. <laughs> Let's see here. Then let's make it a little pointier. All right. <laughs> that hair. That hair is like the icing on the cake. <laughs> the cherry on top. Makes me laugh. Okay, you guys. I think I'm going to wrap it up. I will render this out, I think, and get it. I still need to do the ashes and whatnot. I might do it in post. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty stoked with how he turned out. Let's get that warble out of there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You are welcome. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Mark. Pre-Judge Doom. <laughs> Looks awesome. Thank you so much. All right, you guys. And as usual, uh, I, I do give away my interface, my user interface and my brushes for free. You can go grab those over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can see that right below my, my name right here. And um, yeah, here you go. And I also teach an online course if you're interested in that. The information's over there as well. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. I really appreciate it, um, especially when it, when it makes me laugh and I can have a good time with you guys. So thank you so much, and we will see you next Monday. All right, we'll catch you then. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for stopping by, Todd. Thank you, Neil. See you, everybody. Thanks, Leonard. See ya.